Hey there, I'm Mike Preston and welcome to another awesome rubric demo. Today, we're going to take a look at how we can automate the setup and configuration within an AWS environment as required for the rubric archiving feature CloudOut. Now, there are many tools out there that we can utilize to do this. However, today we're going to focus in on a native service within AWS called CloudFormation. So with that, let's lay a little groundwork here. So for those of you that may be new to Rubrik or simply don't know what CloudOut is, let me lay it out for you. Our customers leverage something called CloudOut in order to automate archival to public or private cloud tiers. Essentially, we define an archival location and its associated retention settings within something called an SLA domain. For example, maybe we want to archive any backups that are older than, say, 30 days up to an AWS S3 bucket. This frees up that valuable rubric capacity. In this case, as backups age out over that 30-day threshold, they will be automatically archived off to S3. Now that said, all the data still remains instantly accessible, which allows for our super fast recovery and global predictive search capabilities. So with that brief overview of CloudOut, now let's dive into how AWS CloudFormation works. AWS CloudFormation is a native AWS service, which allows us to create templates, which we can then use to create various resources within our AWS environment. No matter what we are interacting with, whether it be an S3 bucket or an IAM user or a KMS key, the template uses a common language. We simply define our resources inside a JSON or a YAML file and CloudFormation handles the creation of everything for us. Now, since it is an AWS native service, we get a few perks over some of the other automation tools that we can use. CloudFormation can do things such as configuration drift detection, so if a user changes a resource which has been defined within our CloudFormation stack, we are able to automatically remediate that. It also provides some awesome safeguards if things start to go awry as well, such as resource deletion protection and automatic rollbacks. Simply put, CloudFormation is a really nifty and cool way to provision AWS resources. So armed with that knowledge, what are we gonna demo today? Well, we're gonna take a look at the CloudFormation template for Rubrik CloudOut. This is a template which you can download and utilize in order to create and configure all of the AWS resources in order to utilize CloudOut. This includes the automatic creation of an IAM user and the associated policies needed, as well as the S3 bucket itself. Optionally, we can also create a KMS customer key, which can provide data encryption within our archival locations. Now, once we execute the CloudFormation stack, AWS will output all of the required information that we need in order to jump back into the Rubrik cluster and configure that created S3 bucket as an archival location. So with that, let's jump into the lab and just get started. Okay, so here we are within our AWS management console. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top, click on services, and then go down under the management and governance section and find CloudFormation. Now we can see I have a number of stacks already defined within my account here. For our case, we wanna create a new one. So I'm just gonna go over to the top right hand corner here and click create stack. And I'm gonna select with new resources. Now we have a number of options here. If we already have a template ready, we can simply keep the default template as ready. We can go and we can use a sample template and search AWS for a template that will accomplish what we want it to do. Or we could create from scratch within the designer mode. Now, Rubrik provides you with the CloudFormation template to configure CloudOut. So we'll just select template as ready. And then we have to specify the actual S3 URL as to where that template is stored, or we could download and upload a template file. Now to get access to the Rubrik CloudFormation template for CloudOut, we simply have to go over to build.rubrik.com. Let me jump over there and find the AWS CloudFormation to configure CloudOut to S3 template within the Use Cases section. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Quick Start Guide here, and this is basically going to bring up the GitHub page. If we scroll down, we can find the S3 URL for the template located right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and we'll jump back into our CloudFormation. I'll paste it here and simply click 
next. Now, optionally, you could have downloaded that template and made some changes for your organization if you wanted to, you know, be a little more relaxing on some of the IAM policies or if you wanted to add even more automation into the template, that's an option that you have. Either way, whether you customized it a bit or not, we're going to come back into this stack details section. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to give our stack a name. I'm going to go ahead and call mine Nova. I'm going to throw my initials in there. Uh, I'm just going to say use case cloud out test. Now we get into the actual template parameters. So we can, if we want, use an existing S3 bucket. In my case, I'm going to want to create a new one. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and use this for the name of my S3 bucket as well. And I'm just going to add some other comments on there in order to make sure that's globally unique. I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I'd like to create a new user. As far as my username goes, let's go ahead and call it exactly the same thing. And let's throw another MWP. At least this way, I'm making sure that I'm 100% unique here. As well, for the user policy, I'm going to go ahead and paste that in again and just call it dash policy dash MWP, making sure that I'm creating a unique inline policy name. I'm also going to choose to use KMS in order for encryption. What this will do is create an actual KMS customer key that I can use for the encryption of my S3 bucket when I set it up as an archival location within Gruber. So with the parameters filled out, we'll simply click next. Here we're able to do a number of things. One of the most useful things within an AWS environment is tagging. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple tags. I'm just going to call this use case uh, cloud out. I'm going to add that tag owner Preston. And I'm going to go ahead and put an environment tag uh, so I know what environment this belongs to. Now, obviously, you would add whatever tags you need according to your own organization's tagging policies. But with the tags added, I'm going to go ahead and select next. This is basically just going to bring us to a summary page where we can see, you know what, this is going to cost you some money. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create some S3 buckets. Here's the tags we're adding to everything and all this stuff. And then finally, you just acknowledge that, hey, uh, we're going to create some stuff here. This might cost us some money. Uh, our bills might go up, who knows, and uh, we'll select Create Stack. So what's happening now is CloudFormation is actually reading all of those inputs and taking a look at our template and going out to S3, going out to the IAM service and creating all of those different resources that we defined. All right, through the magic of video, we can see that our status is now Create Complete. If we head on into the events, we can see the different creation events and tasks that were sent in order to create the KMS key, um, create the IM users, the S3 bucket and whatnot. But really what we're looking for in terms of information is we want to see what resources that were created and we can see them here on the resources tabs. But the information that we need in order to input into rubric to now configure this created S3 bucket as an archival location can be found on the outputs tab here. Here you can see things like the AWS bucket name, our user access key, our secret key, which I've blurred out. I mean, I like you guys, but not that much that I'm going to share my secret key with you, as well as, you know, the KMS key ID and what region everything was created in. So with this information in hand, let's jump into rubric and actually configure this S3 bucket as an archival location. All right, so the first thing we need to do is head on over to the gear icon here, and then we'll go down to archive locations. You can see we have a couple set up here already, one on S3, as well as one on GCP. Now to add a new one, I'm just gonna click the little plus, and then it's gonna ask me for a little bit of information. The first thing, what's the archive type? Well, it's S3. What about the region? Well, if you can remember, it was US East 1. So that's US East, North Virginia. It's gonna wanna know our storage class, which I'm going to set as standard, and then it's going to need our access and secret keys. If you can remember, we can grab this information back from our outputs tab. So I can grab the access key here, just paste that in there, and then grab my secret key as well. As well, it's going to want the bucket name. Again, I can jump back and grab that information from the outputs tab makes it very easy to add this stuff. We're going to give the archival a name within rubric. 
I like the one it auto generated there. And then it's going to say, you know, are you using KMS or RSA? If you're using RSA, obviously you have to go and generate that RSA key yourself. Since we're using KMS, we just have to specify that KMS key ID, which again is located on this outputs tab. So we'll copy and paste that in. Once we have all that information, we just simply click add. And there we go. We've successfully added an S3 bucket that we created with the Rubrik CloudFormation template for Cloud Out. I should also note here that all of this configuration that we've just done to the Rubrik cluster can also be automated using a tool such as Terraform or Ansible. In fact, Ansible or Terraform can also automate the creation of the resources within AWS or even execute the cloud formation template if you so wish. So as you can imagine, this can become very, very useful for those customers that have to provision thousands of these buckets for you know, hundreds of rubric clusters, or maybe for the customer that only needs to provision five, however, they wanna do it in a very, very consistent manner. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's many ways to automate the setup and configuration of AWS for use with Rubrik Cloud Out. We can use tools like Ansible or Terraform. And we have many blog posts and different security hardening papers and different things coming out. Check out the video notes below. I'll place all the links there. But for now, thanks for watching and happy automating.